Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. We are starting chapter seven, which is applications of thermodynamics to flow processes. And we're going to be looking at a lot of different problems, but we need to start with our material balance and our energy balance. Now I have a summary slide here from our textbook that is the just the general equations for mass balance, energy balance, and entropy written as a balance. And in these cases, we're going to be looking at the special case right now where we have a single stream at steady flow. And in particular today, we're going to be looking at the material balance and energy balance combined. Now we've already defined that mass flow rate is the velocity times the cross-sectional area times density or velocity times cross-sectional area divided by specific volume. And we're going to want to work with these today in a differential form. So the change in mass for steady flow is going to be zero so that would be dUA over V is zero. And the change in heat transfer plus work is dH plus the change in kinetic energy and change in potential energy. And for our purposes today, we're going to write those as U dU plus G dZ, which if you, you know, play with it, you'll see that that is indeed correct. So what we want to do now is look at what we can learn from using those differential forms for flow through just a duct, okay? <clears throat> so flow through a duct. If I consider this to be just a straight pipe or something where it reduces or something where it does all sorts of crazy stuff, okay? A really bent and wiggly squished up pipe, okay, all of these are going to have the same basic characteristic that flow is coming in and out at one location, and the mass in equals the mass out. So I can write this material balance, D of UA over V equals zero, using the product rule as A over V DU plus u over v dA plus negative ua over v squared dv equals zero. And if I multiply through by um, negative v over ua, now remember u is velocity, then this becomes dv over v minus du over u minus dA over A is equal to zero. So this is going to be our differential material balance. Now what if I looked at an energy balance? Now my energy balance, what I said was that dQ plus dW equals dH plus UDU plus GDZ. And generally, I can assume that the change in z is very small. And I, typically, the size of these things is so small that also the heat loss, even if I fail to insulate it, is probably very small. And there are no moving parts, so I'm sure that work is going to be zero. And so we end up with my energy balance says that dH is minus u du under these assumptions. So we have this expression here. Let me do one further thing with this. Let's use the fundamental relation. So recall that dH is TDS plus VDP. And so therefore I can say that TDS plus VDP is minus U du. So now I have relationships between velocity, pressure, and entropy, and I also have relationships between velocity, uh, specific volume, and area. So the next thing I want to do is, 
if I look at this, I have here these as functions of S and P, right? So this is, and so let's look at what volume is as a function of S and P. So if I want dV for um, a function of V as a function of S and P, then using the definition of a differential, this is dV dS at constant P dS plus dV dP at constant S times dP. Now I'm going to, for this grouping here, I'm going to insert T via the chain rule. It will get it into more usable forms. So I'm not going to use the triple product rule. I'm going to use the chain rule. And so this is dV dt at constant p, dt ds at constant p. So you see how I inserted the dt in there so that those would cancel so everything else remained the same about the path and that should be a ds and then the dv dp i'll just leave it for the moment so i end up with this is my dv relationship now if i look at this this expression here is beta times v, and this expression is t over c sub p. ds dt at constant p is c sub p over t, so it's the reciprocal. So this will be my coefficient for ds. What about this? Well, for this one, let's use a definition from physics for the speed of sound. So C is used for the speed of sound. And in physics, they define this to be the change in velocity squared times dp dv and the square root of that. So you need a negative in front of this so that you get a positive to take the square root of. Next. <clears throat> I'm just going to solve this for dv dp at constant s and play with the math a little bit on your own on the algebra, but you end up with this. And so therefore, when I combine all of these, what I end up with is that dv is equal to beta vt over c sub p ds minus v squared over c squared dp. And if I go back to the expanded material balance, I had dv over v. And so that's now beta vt over c sub p ds minus v squared over c squared dp and all of this over v. And then the next piece of my expanded material balance was du over u, and from my energy balance, that is minus u t d s plus v d p over d u, and then our last piece d a over a. I don't have any new information there, so I'll just leave that. So now I have a s and p all in a relationship. Let's just algebraically recombine these. So if I recopy what I had before, but grouping like terms of dp, ds, and da, I end up with this expression, and then multiply through by u squared, I end up with this. And so we're gonna do one last thing before we get to kind of a more usable result. And that is that I want to introduce a new quantity. So let's define m to be the Mach number. This is u over c. Now u is the speed of the fluid in the pipe.
divided by the speed of sound in the fluid. And that's the Mach number. And if I do this, then what I end up with, so we now have an expression, one minus m squared VDP plus one minus beta u squared over c sub p TDS minus u squared over ADA equals zero. This doesn't look a whole lot better. It's actually going to look worse before we're finished. But what is interesting about this is now I have pressure defined as a function of entropy and cross-sectional area. So now let's do one more thing to this. We're going to combine this with our first law. Okay, so if I do that, then I can replace 1 minus m squared v instead of dp. I can say minus u du, not plus, <laughs> minus uh, TDS all over V. So those cancel. So we can eliminate those. And then this is still the same. And then if we pull like terms together, right, because now I've got ds's here and here, and divide by 1 minus m squared, actually I'm going to divide by negative 1 minus m squared, then I end up, I end up with u du minus beta u squared over c sub p plus m squared over 1 minus m squared, and u squared over a over 1 minus m squared. But again, I can interpret this as u as a function of s and a. So I have p as a function of s and a, and u as a function of s and a. One last thing that I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to turn these into derivatives instead of differentials. And so I'm going to interpret these differentials as derivatives with respect to location or position x. So as I flow through this duct, how far through the duct have I gone? So we have v times 1 minus m squared dp dx plus t times 1 plus beta u squared over c sub p ds dx minus u squared over a da dx equals 0. And this is our relationship between P, S, and A with respect to position. And we have U, D, U, D, X minus T times oh, that messy group, D, S, D, X minus or plus U squared over A, 1 minus M squared, D, A, D, X equals 0 is a relationship between U, S, and A with respect to position. So let's consider a case for pipe flow. Now, if I'm just flow through a normal pipe, inlet and outlet, then the area is a constant throughout just a traditional pipe. And so therefore, I end up with dp dx is equal to t times 1 plus beta u squared over c sub p over v times m squared minus 1 ds dx. Now notice, because I moved this to the other side, I switched the sign on m squared minus 1. And then on the other piece, I have u times du dx is equal to t times beta u squared over c sub p plus m squared. Again, over 1 minus m squared ds dx. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we do know that friction will cause the flow to be irreversible. And we're assuming that q equals 0. So therefore, based on this, I should expect that ds dx will be greater than 0. 
and equal to zero in the reversible limit. So what does this tell us about the signs of dp dx and du dx? All of those variables, t, v, beta, u, c sub p, um, m, all of those are going to be positive. The only piece that has a possibility of not being positive is 1 minus m squared, and that depends on whether or not m is greater than or less than 1. Now, let's define subsonic flow. whenever m is less than 1, or u is less than c, and we will define supersonic flow when m is greater than 1, or u is greater than c. Okay? So what's going to happen in these cases? So if we look at the case for subsonic flow, if m is less than 1, okay, paying attention to the m here, everything else is positive. So if m is less than 1, this is something smaller than 1, so I'm going to end up with negative. So <clears throat> p will decrease, right? ds dx is always going to increase. So P decreases with position, so PE is less than PI. And we know that in this case here, this is still positive, so that doesn't change anything there, but 1 minus M squared, I'm dividing by something positive, so U is going to increase. Okay, and if I have supersonic flow, m is greater than 1, or u is greater than c, and when I end up with this one, I end up with just exactly the reverse, that p is going to increase. and u will decrease. Next, let's look at nozzles. So if we look at a converging nozzle, which is like a garden hose when I put a nozzle on the end so that I can reach the back of my garden, um, in that case, I have the area is decreasing, so dA dx is less than zero. Now, if I further assume that it's nearly reversible, then I can say that dS dx is approximately zero, and that's going to simplify our assumptions here a lot. And then I can get dP dx is u squared over av over 1 minus m squared times dA dx, and du dx is minus u over a over 1 minus m squared dA dx. Okay, so again, let's consider what is going to happen here if I look at these various cases. So for subsonic flow, m is less than 1. This is the kind of thing that, like I said, with my garden hose, what I would expect to see. Then m less than 1 means 1 minus m squared is going to be positive, and so therefore um, dp dx is less than 0. Right, D, this is negative, and so this is positive, so therefore dp dx is negative. So pe is going to be less than pi. And if I look at the velocity, this is a negative here, a negative here, and this is positive. So therefore this is going to be positive or u at the exit will be greater than u at the inlet, which is the expected case. 
But if I do supersonic, when m is greater than 1, then I end up with the opposite sign. So p increases, or p exit is greater than p inlet. And u decreases, so u at the inlet is, well, let's say u at the exit is less than, we'll just clean that up, okay. U at the exit is less than u at the inlet. So that's a kind of surprising result, right? That's unexpected. But this is what happens with supersonic flow of a gas through a converging nozzle. What about if I flip the direction of the nozzle? So now I have dA dx greater than zero, and so this will be positive. And if m is less than 1, this is positive. Therefore, dp dx is positive, so p will increase. So p at the exit is going to be larger than p at the inlet. And velocity, I have a negative here. This is positive. This is positive in this case, and so this is going to decrease the velocity, or u at the exit will be less than u at the inlet, which again makes sense. And then if I look at supersonic flow, I'm going to flip the signs of the 1 minus m squared term. And so p will decrease, so p at the exit is going to be less than p at the inlet, and u will increase, so u at the exit, <laughs> I can write this, is going to be greater than u at the inlet. So in class, we'll also look at the converging diverging nozzle. I have a video on that um, elsewhere that I'll link you to. And we'll look at throttling valves in class. Thank you very much for your time.